Howdy, how's it going? My name's Navi Chappie, and the only thing that I like more than the setting of Eberron are the creatures that inhabit the setting of Eberron. And no race has become more popular throughout the D&D multiverse than the Magitech Metal Punks, the Warforged. I'm gonna be talking about the origins of the Warforged, how they interact with the rest of the world, and give mechanics that, while technically are unofficial, they're probably still the closest thing to the official ruling on the race that we're gonna get. As always, keep in mind that a lot of this is just my opinion, so if you feel like my gears are rusted and my knobs don't work like they used to, feel free to run your Warforged however you like. But with that away, let's begin. So, long ago in the mystical world of Eberron, on the mighty continent of Corvair, there lived five countries bound into one kingdom ruled by the beloved and wise King Galifair. The king had five children, to whom he gave each of them one of his kingdoms, and he told his children, Now kids, when I'm gone, there will be no one in your lives to look out for but each other. You must stay loyal and trust each other, for you are the only family that the others will ever have. The king soon after succumbed to age and departed from the land of the living, wherein his kids heeded his words and recognized each other as family worth fighting for and so they all tried to kill each other. Now, the specifics of what would eventually be known as the Great War have actually already been covered in a pair of Eberron videos that I did a while back ago, but the important thing to note here is that during the conflict of the Five Kingdoms, each country was constantly looking for ways to get an edge out above the other armies, and one independent faction, known as House Caneth, had invented a way to keep the profitable war going. They had manufactured their own line of mass-produced warriors made of magic and metal, completely autonomous, and yet able to be programmed to wholeheartedly believe in whatever cause you want them to fight for. They were dubbed Warforged, and House Caneth then decided to make the fattest of stacks by shipping them off to all five armies so that the war could never end and each army would constantly have to pay more for more Warforged. For the remaining duration of the war, House Caneth was absolutely rolling high in dough and it looked like the fighting would never be over once the Warforged hit the field and proved themselves just as able as any man with all the same emotions and intelligence but none of the moral gray area of sending real people to go die in meaningless battle. But as the story goes, the war was brought to an abrupt standstill when the nation of Sire was suddenly and completely wiped off the map in a magical explosion that enveloped the entire land. And all the other nations took it as a sign that the fighting needed to end. Peace treaties were written, soldiers went back home, but the Warforged, they didn't have anything beyond the war. It was all that they were built for, all that they knew, and it was seemingly impossible to come back from a life of war when that war was their entire life. Some Warforged tried to integrate into society, but the other races of the world weren't too keen on accepting machines that were walking embodiments of so many years of bad vibes. Still, the Warforged were granted freedom from the countries that once ordered them, and while some have found new lives and servitude to make up for the pain of the war, others have become wandering nomads looking for a new place to stay, and others still have gone into the Mornlands that used to be Sire, since the magical radiation from the explosion only affects living creatures, so Warforged are relatively safe. These Warforged are led by a legendary Warforged, known as the Lord of Blades, who rules the Mornlands and plans to make the place a permanent residence for his people to thrive in. Nowadays, the Warforged are still seen as second-class citizens, with the most bigoted of people believing that they're nothing more than soulless killing machines, despite evidence of a spark of life in them. Warforged, despite not having a permanent home, can still be seen in most every other town in Corvair, doing menial labor, roaming in adventuring parties, or just standing still for weeks to months on end, waiting for new orders that will never arrive. But if you wanted to play the robotic war veterans in your own game, you're in luck, as the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron provides rules to play your clinksters in the 5th edition. Warforged get a bonus to constitution, advantage against and resistance to poison, immunity to disease, no need for food, water, or breathing, you never sleep, your long rest only takes 6 hours instead of 8, and you have an adaptable natural armor that you can spend your long rest shifting between basic, medium, and heavy armors. <gasps> But wait, there's more! The Warforged also get three sub-races in the form of the Envoy, which increases any ability score and gives you a free skill and super tool proficiency, the Juggernaut, which increases strength, gives you a natural weapon in the form of punching people really hard, as well as the powerful build trait, and the Skirmisher, which increases your dex and your movement speed, and lets you travel stealthily at a normal pace when traveling over long distances. Holy mother beeping bop, that is a lot of racial benefit for one race to have. Not even including the crazy adaptability of both the armor and the sub-races. But it does paint a good picture of powerful warriors with with a very specialized set of skills, and it means that, like Warforged themselves, you can take up any combat role that your party has need for. Also, fun fact, I don't have anywhere else to put this, but Warforged weren't even given names originally, so when they became independent, they had to figure out how naming things worked, and so now, Warforged naming conventions are just random English words that the Warforged happen to like. So far, in my games, I've had a Warforged named Book, Warhammer, Bebo, Click, and indiscriminate yelling noises like, ah! But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and comment, subscribe to a piece of the Robot Overlords, and maybe support me on Patreon to help me engorge the Robodong. But yeah, Davy out.